Hi guys, welcome to Code Debugger. In today's video, we are going to cover what is asynchronous communication and how we can implement asynchronous communication in Spring Boot applications. What is asynchronous communication and how many types of communications are there in Java? There are three types of message exchanging patterns or communication format is there in Java. One is synchronous, asynchronous and fire and forget. What is synchronous communication? This is called as blocking way of programming. That means one thread will wait until the execution completion of another thread. Okay. So second question is what is asynchronous communication? So this is called as non-blocking way of programming. One thread will not wait until the another thread execution completion. Okay. The third is what is fire and forget? The fire and forget is called as also non-blocking way of programming. This we can achieve using asynchronous communication okay so what is the difference between synchronous and asynchronous communication let's say there we are having four different different tasks in synchronous communication it will wait until the whole the process completion that means it will take 45 seconds to complete the whole job but in case of asynchronous communication it will take only 20 seconds to complete the whole job because the first thread will do its job and it will return the response to the user then internally another thread will continue with other tasks okay so asynchronous communication will go like whenever the tasks are independent to each other in that case we can go for asynchronous communication okay so let's go ahead and try to implement that in spring boot application so this is the normal spring boot project i have imported into the intellij let's go to the pom.xml and we'll see what are the dependencies i have added so if you see in our pom.xml i have added spring boot starter web dependence okay so let's quickly go ahead and create the service class and controller class we'll see how we can implement the asynchronous communication in spring boot so let me create one service package service then i will create one controller also okay so in service i will write one class called notification service okay in notification service let me annotate this with other service so here i will have one method which will send one sms to the customer okay so let me write the method public let's say void send text message okay so it will take one mobile number as a argument so inside that i will write some dummy logic to call the third party services and uh, will send the sms from that third party services okay so for now we are not calling any third party services we'll just write the dummy logic okay so here let's say i will wait for 10 seconds after that i will write some logic like sms send successfully and we'll call this method inside the controller class okay so let me wait for some time So let me call this method slip slip of two second I will call after that I will do here sys out sys out of yeah that's it let me go to the controller let's create a controller notification controller okay so this controller we need to annotate with other the rest controller let me write one method public string send message here it will take one mobile number so let me inject the service here at the right autoware so we injected the service here let's call the service class method inside the controller method notification service dot send message of mobile number will pass here okay so inside that we have written some dummy logic to call the third party services that's it we have written let me return here something dummy response like return message sent successfully okay so let me annotate this with other uh, get mapping slash send the url so let's start the server and we'll see what is the problem we are facing and why we should go for asynchronous communication okay so let's start the application is getting up i started on 8080 port let me go to the browser since it is get mapping you can call directly from the browser 
localhost 8080 slash send right then we need to pass one parameter okay so let's hit if you see here third party is calling after two second and the browser is waiting until two second completion right this is called synchronous programming who is calling that service he has to wait until the process completion right but in this case this task is independent right so whenever we are sending any message that this task is independent task so what we can do we can make this asynchronous okay how we can make this asynchronous call spring has given one annotation called other it async that annotation we can use let me use this so if you are using other it async then automatically whenever a call will come to this method then another thread will create and he will call this services so let me print here the thread name also okay so in controller so let me give the thread name here thread dot current thread dot get name so we have annotated here at the rate async but we need to enable the async communication so we need to go to the main class and we need to write one annotation called enable async that's it spring will do the default configuration it will do and it will enable the async communication for us let me start the server and we'll see what is the difference we are getting here yeah server started on 8080 port let me go to the browser let me hit if you see here here we are getting immediately the response we are getting right with the head name is 8080 ex ec1 we are getting okay and if you go to the console here called third party services send text messages and here the thread name is task1 but here the thread name is exec1 that means another thread created and that task is executed by another thread that's why you are getting the response immediately here okay if you see here the threads are getting changed every time but this is another thread and in console here we are getting another threads okay so this is called asynchronous communication this is the simple way we can enable the asynchronous communication let's say whenever we are doing any fire and forget type of communication here we are sending one message right after that we are not doing anything that means fire and forget communication we are doing here right with asynchronous communication so let's say here one exception will occur okay let me raise one exception so here number format exception will come right so in this case whether our program is capable to handle that exception or not we'll check okay let me run the server yeah server started on 8080 port let me check here when we are calling we are getting the sms sent successfully but internally we are getting some exceptions here if you see third party called but from third party we are getting some error message that error message we are not handling and we are throwing that directly to the spring so how we can manage these exceptions how we can handle this exception in our application whenever we are doing any asynchronous communication in that case also we should handle the exceptions so how we can do that for that spring has provided one class that is called asynchronous configurer support that we need to extend and we need to write our custom logic to handle these exceptions okay so let me create one configuration class and we'll see how we can do the configurations okay we should annotate this with other right configuration and this should be extends from async configurer support and here we need to override two methods at the right override there are two methods we need to override first one get async executor second one the uncached exception handler okay here spring has provided the default configuration but we can write our own configurations also let me write my own configuration okay let me write another custom exception handler async exception handler so async exception handler should implement one interface 
that is called ASIC on current exception handler. Okay, so here is the one method we need to override that one handle on current exception. It will pass one throwable here and the method name and the arguments it will pass here. We will log here. So let me annotate this with the right component. Okay. So this we should inject inside the configuration class and we need to return. Okay. So we have enabled our own configuration plus our own exception handler. Let's go ahead and see whether we are able to handle this exception or not. Okay. Let me start the server and we'll check. Application started on 8080 port. Let's go to the browser and we'll hit. Okay. Let me check what is the exception we are getting. Thread pool not initiated. We need to initiate this thread pool. Okay. That means initialize we need to do. Let's start again. Okay. Started. Let me hit. If you see here, the thread name is exec1 message sent successfully are getting and if you see here there is no exception but we are logging that exception okay call third party services asking by thread one and we are logging the exception message and this message is coming from our custom exception handler if you see this is the sysout you have written here right so from this it is coming <laughs>